So starting with work volumes, Helen, how has the nature of work changed during 2020, 2024, EasyJet? I think it's fair to say there's been a complete transformation in, in the work that we do. Um, we were already thinking about how we structure um, the work that we do in-house and getting that balance right between in-house and outsourcing. Um, but certainly over the last eight months, we've seen areas of work grow that we hadn't even um, considered. Um, you know, it, it will be no secret in the marketplace that we, we went out for an RFP earlier on um, this, this calendar year. And, um, and we hadn't even included financing in there because it simply wasn't something that EasyJet engaged in um, on, on any sort of scale. And um, that, that's completely transformed in the last few months. Um, we've seen um, some, some really quite significant transactions go through. Um, and so I think that reflects the real transformation in the types of work that, that we as a legal team are dealing with. Um, what we've also seen is a business that's that, um, refocused itself entirely as a consequence of the events of the last um, few months. And um, so we're now looking at how we can best play in to support them. Projects that were seen as a huge priority nine months ago have now been deprioritized. Um, and other work is, is coming in at a rapid pace. And so we're having to make sure that we're equipped to respond to that, whether it's in the in-house team or whether it's by working with our partner law firms. Are you seeing more work coming into the team with uh, the same or reduced headcount? Um, so we are seeing more work coming in, absolutely. I think the volumes are much higher. I think um, organisations generally, I think, are, are a little bit more risk averse. Um, everybody's just trying to be that little bit more careful and make sure that we're getting the processes um, in place and we're following them. Um, unfortunately, yes, we, we did have a restructuring as part of the team um, over the summer. Um, it's been well publicised in the press. We were very lucky in the team um, and we um, we have managed to hold on to the majority of people. So, you know, we are dealing with, with a slightly reduced headcount, um, but we are, you know, we are absolutely facing into much, much higher volumes of work. And, and are you finding new ways to tackle that volume? Are you using, for example, interim lawyers or alternative legal service providers or, or looking for different things from your panel law firms? So we are absolutely looking for different things from our panel law firms. I think that's a really, really interesting point. Um, we had already taken steps um, long before we, even I may say long before we knew COVID was a thing. I think COVID came so far out of nowhere. <laughs> I think it caught all of us a little bit off guard. But we'd already started making plans about how the team should be shaped so that we could make sure that there were the right development opportunities there for the team and that we could ensure that people had the opportunity to get involved in the sort of work that they really wanted to be involved in that would help them to grow and develop but would also deliver great value into the business and so we were already reflecting on how we use our partner law firms um, and, and how we deploy them. Um, one of the things that we've done as part of our recent panel exercise is actually bring in um, a value tier. And that's not something that EasyJet had ever really, really done before. And that reflects the fact that we're really looking at how we can much more strategically outsource any work that needs dealing with. Um, we're also um, very much in the, the early stages of um, working with um, an, an outsourcing support um, organization who've, who've provided us with some support, um, some paralegal support on some large transactions. And that's a very, very different way of doing things for EasyJet. They worked alongside a magic circle firm um, and uh, very closely. It was an absolutely brilliant experience. Um, and that is something that's absolutely new to us. And so we are starting to have to reflect on how we can actually deploy what's out there in the marketplace at pace to deliver the right value into the business. And overall, Helen, would you say the pressure's increased in your team during 2020? I think from a workload perspective, yes, uh, because the pace has been so phenomenal. Um, it's not just more matters coming in. It's the, it's, the, um, it's, it's the level those matters are at. You know, the amount of stuff that is hitting the kind of C-suite, the board, um, and are absolutely business critical is huge and the pace at which they're having to be delivered is absolutely massive. Um, I think the, the, other, the other aspect to that, um, you know, which we'll probably come on to in a little bit in terms of the team is, is actually um, the impact of us all working remotely. 
it's it's a very very difficult situation to be in um and i think we've all had our challenges with it um at various points in time whether they be technology or you know physical and actually getting up and moving around the place um but i think being disconnected when you're trying to deal with some really really tough situations adds a layer of pressure that that nobody's ever really had to deal with you know it's a different situation when you're in a deal room um with you know your partner law firms and everybody's hunkering down and somebody's dashing out for five minutes to go and grab the coffees um it's that's a very different situation to all sitting in different locations across the country and attempting to face into some of the biggest challenges that an organization's ever had to encounter